Welcome back to the London Free Press Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. It's been another very busy week. And if you've missed out on anything happening in the city or surrounding areas, don't forget, you can always catch up on the latest news in the pages of the London Free Press. And of course, over at lfpress.com, something that I thought was kind of, I don't want to say fizzling out, but calming down a bit and then has now kind of really boiled over again is the pandemic in regards to numbers. Of course, we are seeing a spike in cases. Once the mask mandate got dropped, we were warned this was going to happen. Um, But I'm excited to catch up with London Free Press health reporter Jennifer Beeman today. Jen, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I think the thing that I want to start off with is what's going on in the hospitals? Because I'm reading stories, staff, nursing staff, doctors, there are staff shortages because so many people are getting sick. People going in for un non-COVID related things are now coming out with COVID because it's just spreading. So what is the hospital looking like at the moment? So hospital status, I think we're at 44 patients. There's about 17 that are in the hospital for COVID. It's important to note that the hospital tests everyone they admit. So we're going to have, you know, numbers like that. Um, And sometimes it's difficult to parse between four COVID versus, you know, an incidental infection, but that's kind of where we're at. 17, four COVID, 44 in total. Um, the real issue with hospitals right now, like you said, is, is staff. They're off for 10 days if they're, if they're positive, which is a really long time in the world of work. And so we're coming up close to 300 people at LHSC that are positive, that are, are you know, not able to come in. Uh, and that's been the real pinch point through even the Omicron wave hospitalizations were high, but, you know, they weren't as high in the ICU anyways, as they had been in previous waves. Um, but really it was, it was the staff thing that became the big issue. And, you know, even the school board's been seeing that people off sick, you can't, you can't just go out in public nowadays with the sniffles. Um, you got to be really kind of more aware and especially in a hospital or a school. Absolutely. Something that premier Doug Ford had said, when the mask mandate was being dropped is towards the end of April, we were working towards no restrictions. So that meant no masking in hospitals, uh, public transit, long-term care homes. There's been some back and forth on that as of late, just because of the spike in numbers that we're seeing. What's happening with our hospitals in this region and the mask mandate? And what's that going to look like come the end of April? You know, our hospitals here, the, the whole bunch of them put out a big thing earlier this week saying we're keeping masks indefinitely, uh, which, you know, maybe we saw coming. It, it didn't feel like, you know, in a week or two, masks were going to be gone. That just didn't feel kind of where we're at as a society or a province right now. Um, so they're, they're keeping them around. I don't know what indefinitely means. No, indefinitely could mean, you know, six months, could mean till the fall, could it mean forever? Who knows? But I guess we'll just see. Um, but yeah, you know, I think the one thing about the pandemic that we've all known is that, you know, saying something doesn't make it so, and, and just when we say something, the plans completely shift. So like you said, with the province, it'll be really all eyes on Queens Park to see what they do about that lifting of, um, you know, those kind of final mask places. There were some signals that they're kind of evaluating that. And I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of just hold off on that for a little while longer, just because of the way things have been going. Now, with regards to schools, we're seeing the same thing that we're seeing in the hospitals. Teachers, there is a shortage. We saw not one, but two schools in the London region last week, Friday, close because of staff shortages. Of course, mass mandates have been lifted in school settings. How do we combat this? Because like you said, getting the sniffles and going out in public is no longer a thing. I was guilty of this. I worked sick as a dog pre-pandemic when I absolutely should have been at home. Not the case now. So of course we're seeing staff shortages. Where do we go from here though? There was a Thames Valley meeting held on Tuesday night. Board of Trustees met to discuss potentially re-implementing the mask mandate uh, based on advice from lawyers that was voted against. Um, I just, I don't know, where do we go from here? Because staff shortages obviously are a real concern. But like you said, all eyes are on Queen's Park right now. Everybody's waiting for the province to jump in here. Sure. You know, I spoke to the Catholic board earlier this week when they were, you know, the Thames Thames Valley Public Board had closed two schools because of staff shortages. They called the Catholic board just to be like, yo, are you seeing this too? Um, And, you know, they're they're kind of of the opinion that they just need to kind of get by the next little bit. It's still sort of respiratory season. Uh, Last night's special meeting of Thames Valley, Alex Summers said, you know, there's still, there's flu and colds going around too. So there's COVID and just other things that you get in the winter when people get together. So 
you know, maybe if we can just get kind of by the next little bit into May and into June, things will calm down kind of naturally. That's, that's sort of the hope some people are pinning on. I don't know if you've noticed, if you've been in a grocery store, a lot of times the cold and flu medicine aisle is really picked over. So there's just a lot of that out there right now. I know in our house we had, I had like my first kind of cold in uh, two years and, you know, it, we took rapid tests. It didn't seem to be COVID, but again, you never really know right with Omicron. So I think a lot of people are kind of dealing with that right now. And again, you just, in this climate, it, it means you stay home. Um, so that's sort of what everyone's looking at. It's funny that you bring up the cold and flu aisle because I thought New Year's and Christmas was really bad post holiday season. I knew a lot of people all of a sudden who had gone two years without catching COVID all of a sudden had COVID. And then it kind of started to taper off a little bit in February and then March hit and March break hit. And all of a sudden, uh, I've become like an anomaly touch base. I've not been sick in over two years. I have not had COVID. However, so many people close to me have had it that I went out to the store and I bought a Costco size pack of Lipton soup. And I bought some throat lozenges just in preparation for when, and if I do catch it. Um, so I think we are seeing a lot of that now talking about Dr. Alex Summers, I feel like he has faced different scrutiny just because of the transition from Dr. Chris Mackey. Um, what is Alex Summers saying right now? Because I know he's facing pressure, some public pressure, again, with regards to the mass mandates. What's he saying with regards to that in our region? So the public board last night didn't vote to include it on advice of their council. The province has been pretty clear about, you know, boards not doing their own thing. Um, you know, Dr. Summers, since the start, has, has not been entertaining a section 22 order under the health promotion protection act those are things that that provision is for kind of emergency emerging issues in a community um and he just has not seen the situation as it is as, as one of those times where that's appropriate so he's kind of sticking to his guns on that um it's, but at the same time, while he's not going to drop the hammer down with the Section 22 mandating masks in London, he's been really, really clear about telling people, hey, listen, please hold, hold on to them a little longer. Like, definitely keep wearing them, at least through the spring. Uh, I know certainly the health unit has, has kept them on, definitely, like all their staff. Uh, so, you know, while it's still a choice, the, the growing chorus of medical officers, well, including Dr. Summers, are saying, please just keep them on. Um, even though you're no longer legally required to in Ontario. I know I've hit a new level of pandemic fatigue. I thought I had bottomed out already and I seem to have hit a new low <laughs> with the fatigue and what's going on. And I know I'm, and I've said this time and time again, I'm really bad for reading comment sections and I'll go on Twitter and a story will get posted about COVID or COVID numbers or hospital staff or take your pick. And somebody inevitably says the pandemic is over or this has become an endemic I guess, in your opinion, are we there yet? Because we've seen, they've just announced, the province has just announced testing, PCR testing requirements are going to change a little bit. We're watching wastewater. Um, it's elevated. I had seen a statistic roughly, we're probably seeing, unreported of course, between 100 and 150,000 cases daily. These are new cases. Um, but people are still carrying on, for lack of a better term. Most people coming out unscathed um, not to downplay, because I know there are severe reactions to COVID. Um, but in your opinion, do you think that's kind of where we are headed? Is this becoming an endemic? So a while back last summer, I wrote a, a story kind of about there's two sorts of ends to a pandemic. There's like a medical end, like an emergency end where cases are low and whatever. And there's kind of a social end where people just say, you know what, we're living with it now. Um, I feel like maybe we're in that sort of social end. Maybe people have just decided that they're living with it. Um, that's sort of evidenced by the fact that people are seeming to carry on as they would. There's a few things that are really rowing in the right direction for us, I feel like, and any, any um, experts I've spoken to have said this as well. We've got Paxlovid, which is an antiviral drug, which is really useful. London pharmacies are now dispensing it or will be very shortly. It's a, you know, we, we can assess people at our assessment center for eligibility for it. Um, and the province just expanded eligibility for that, that drug, that antiviral drug. So that's kind of good. That could keep people out of the hospital, uh, which is kind of the whole goal of a lot of these restrictions, right? So, you know, we've got good uptake, good vaccine uptake. We've got fourth doses rolling out to people. Um, you know, Ontarians have really demonstrated that 
vaccines, you know, by and large are something they're, they're interested in. So, um, you know, in the fall, maybe we'll see fourth doses expanded more broadly. And, you know, so there's, there's a bunch of things here that I think have kind of taken the emergency out of the pandemic for a lot of people and um, maybe are a little bit of a path forward, but it, it is, it is a difficult time for people. Like it's kind of, you know, there's still so much disease out there and there's still quite a bit of fear and concern and there should be, I mean, you know, it's, it's, we've been two years of this, but um, there's pieces there that can certainly maybe help us move forward a little. I'm glad that you brought up the fourth booster shot. Um, It's too early really to talk about numbers because it just started getting administered to the 80 plus crowd um, generally. And then there are other subcategories like immunocompromised and indigenous peoples. Um, Do we think we are going to see success with the fourth dose? Because I know getting the third dose booster administered was a bit of an uphill battle and there wasn't as much of a demand as I think a lot of people suspected we were going to see? That is correct. In the London area, we're at about 55%. And even province-wide, it's about that. So for those third doses, I know people that haven't got their third dose. It just, it did, it kind of lacked the urgency for some people. Some people got both shots to keep their job um, and, and are not keen on the third. Uh, and then the fourth dose, I mean, I don't, I don't know that uh, everyone knows that these things are available. Um, the messaging around fourth doses has been kind of a get it if you want, it could help you if, but, you know, we're kind of just throwing everything at, at it. So it'll be interesting to see what uptake is on those. I mean, you know, the, the way that the third dose has gone is there's quite a bit of uptake in third doses in the oldest and most vulnerable, which is kind of where you want them, and less as you go down the age brackets. So I'm, I'm wondering if it'll be the same for fourth, but I guess we'll, we'll see in a month. We've obviously seen the Vax pass go to the wayside. Has there been any discussion or rumblings that you're hearing? Because you're definitely more connected than the average person um, with regards to changing fully Vax from two to three shots. Or do you think we're just kind of seeing, like you said, two considered fully vaxxed falls in your court if you want more shots? That is something I asked Dr. Summers last time I spoke, you know, because really technically the definition is two and We know that that's not necessarily the greatest, uh, especially with Omicron, they were really, really promoting three. I I don't know, I guess that would have to come from the federal government, Health Canada and NACI, but what they decide that is. Um, What the health unit has started doing, what Dr. Summers was saying is just not saying fully vaccinated anymore, but saying up to date on your, up to date on your vaccine. So, um, you know, do you have the most up to date that you you're eligible for? And um, that would include certainly the third dose, but I, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult because there's only 55% or so that have taken the third dose. So yeah, that would change a lot of things if all of a sudden fully vaccinated meant something different than what it means now. I think you just nailed it. And I think you, you said it earlier, there's um, a lot of people that don't know about the fourth dose. So I think using the term up to date kind of muddies the water a little bit because what does that even mean? at this point, really, if if we're talking four shots and then potentially a fifth shot next year, what does up to date mean? Um, we're not going to solve that answer today, but I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Jen, for the insight. And we'll keep an eye on the world of COVID, of course, in the pages of the London Free Press and over at lfpress.com. Uh, don't forget, if you're enjoying the podcast and you haven't subscribed yet, do so. Streaming on all major platforms. New episode every single Thursday comes out at 7 a.m. Of course, we live over at lfpress.com and youtube.com as well. We'll be, be- we'll be back again next Thursday with another edition of the London Free Press podcast. Until then, stay well.